repairman here. So if you see some guy walking around, uh, it's no problem. Because we're, you know, I, this is bad feng shui. Feng shui, as they say in, uh, in Great Britain. I can't do the show without the Hans Man neon light on. It's just, uh, it's just bothering me. And uh, so we have people working on it even as we speak. Uh, Dr. Audrey Gusky is with us. Great Doctor, to be here as always. I know always you're Fred. upset too that the light is out. It's hard to perform. Well, I wish you had a sign that said Gusky on it, but <laughs> when I come, so this <laughs> is my fifth time, I, I, I think I should get my you know, own okay, light. This, you know, why did I come back? Huh? <laughs> Everybody, now they want their own name and lights. <laughs> the star of the show's name and lights is, is just not working. Uh, all right. Well, did you watch yesterday? You watched yesterday's Super Bowl. Absolutely. I watched it for the ads, obviously. Yeah, it was an awful game. game. You didn't watch it for the game? No. Why not? You I mean, don't like football? I was grading papers while the game was on. Were you? No, I like football, but it was it was a long game. What's the, what's the word on the sign? Uh, no, you're what do you, what's that mean? It's dead. What do you mean it's dead? <laughs> okay. oh, I'm not. You know what? I'm not working here if the sign's not on. If it ain't fixed by tomorrow, get out the reruns again. Because it's over. I like that sign. We have to come up with an alternative. Uh, okay. We go. Now we're dropping things. That's all right. We don't have a sign of the radio station, wise guy, talking in my ear. Big red for the radio station. Oh, you know what? I'll bring the one down for the radio station. It says KDKA. You want to put that behind me? I don't think so. Here, I'm sorry, Audrey. That's okay. Can we get Brad. on with the show, Fred? Hey, knock it off back there. You know? <laughs> you, you got come, a vent. I, I, you got a vent. You come yeah. back, you like to see th people messing things up. All right. You don't like football. Oh, no, I like football. The game was just a very long, long game. I well, mean, they was, always are. Which I'm very interested to find out what the advertisers now who were in the third and the fourth quarter spending $2.3 million when no one was watching the game at that point. They, you know, they wasted their money. Were there any, money. um, but I know the third and fourth quarter, I think that's when I was sleeping. Uh, but because I was, I needed to sleep so I could get, get up, up and watch Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. Uh, but didn't they repeat some of the ads later in the show too? Yeah, they did. Yeah, what ended up happening, even a lot of these ads weren't newly created ads because the economy is so bad. CBS had a few ads left over a couple of days before the Super Bowl. And so they were selling ads at a bargain. Prices, nobody ever quoted what they were, but um, but that's why we saw some ads. Yeah, and, and, and also, I heard somebody say this morning that uh, one of the reasons why there weren't so many new ads is because there was that uh, strike by my fine union, the American Federation of Television Radio Artists and the Screen Actors Guild, and so it was tough for them to crank them out in time. I don't know if that's it, true It, it could have, but uh, I, I think it was just a matter of funding. Great union. Uh, all right, well, shall we, uh, the, now, you, you've you made a little list of some things that list. you like. Mm -hmm. And the USA Today actually has their list of exactly. what, they, they actually brought together, what, 100 people? Yeah, they did some focus groups, and so they had them watch them, and then they... Graded uh, them. Yeah, or the, the, the participants graded them. All right. <laughs> We'd like to hear your comments on all this, too. I mean, if you liked it or didn't like it, or tell us what your favorite ad was, because that really was the most interesting part of the ball game. I went up and went to the bathroom during the game, not during the commercials. <laughs> uh, Okay, let's run. Here's the. Uh, is it? Are these in any particular order for you? Uh, no, they are not in any order. So I mean, uh, Brian uh, in terms of together. preference, I gave him the list, but uh, Brian just put them together. Yeah. Well, you want to start with the E Trade one, the death of the. No, dog I think we have to start with the way they're in because that's the way they're, they're okay. back there. Okay. So otherwise, they can't handle it back there in the control that's room fine. because we'll it. you know it's on tape and it's not a matter. Okay. Let's roll the first one. Pepsi, this was a 45 second commercial. Most of them were 30s, right. but Pepsi did a number of 45. I mean, if you could go for the extra 15 seconds, Pepsi. And they gave up the little girl. They was did. Was she getting too old? It was just people didn't like her anymore. She, she had really? grown old. Yeah, they, they wanted some fresh faces, is what, what the advertiser said. Well, that's interesting since mm -hmm. we'll. We'll hold, keep that in mind when we get to the later Pepsi commercial. What do you think of that one? I thought that one was fair. Pepsi in the past had always won and had very creative ads. They were okay this year. They had a couple in the top ten, which was good. But it was it was just an yeah, ad. Was, I saw that. I said, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nothing special about that. Because, you know, if you're on a subway in New York, I don't know if you've ever been on a subway in New York, mm. and you pull out a Pepsi, first of all, if the transit cops don't get you, somebody will steal that mother right off of you. They will, oh, boom, give me that thing. <laughs> and, that's, and that's exactly what, they're not that nice on the subways in New York. Not in New York. No. Nope. Uh, and the subways here, all right. Uh, okay, now this one. I, I, I like this. Do you one. like the next yes. one? The next one coming up because this is one of my favorites. Before we play it, uh, uh, the dot, last year was dot coms. Seventeen of them advertising. This year there were only three left to advertise, and three of them completely went out of business. And as you watch this one very carefully, and they have the sock pet coming through. Yeah, yeah. That is so symbolic of of the dot coms just dying because that was from pet.com. E Trade, let's roll it. Here now, I didn't know this. You just told me that monkey mm -hmm. was. Uh, they used that. He was from last year. He was a dancing monkey for E Trade. He was very successful. People liked him. They could relate to him. I thought this was very creatively done because what there was a lot of symbolism. Attached well, to that. now here's here's see. Sometimes you can get too deep. And I wonder how many people, uh, the, the first thing that I saw that reminded me of that littering campaign, was it a, lit it was a littering campaign years ago, I bet you the 70s, where the American Indian came out oh, yeah. and saw Classic. the litter and then s it was riding on a horse and tears came out. Oh, uh, I didn't even pick see? that one up. You're see, that's what I'm saying. Fred, you should be a marketer. <laughs> but I wonder how many, I mean, so I'm wondering so though how many people picked it up. Yeah. Well, because there were, first of all, the sock puppet, that was pretty easy to pick up, mm -hmm. but I wonder how many people did. And then, maybe it's only for the smart people that, oh, I'm not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. But I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, well, or let's put it this way, the old people, because that's a pretty old oh, ad, that, 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 that the crying Indian <laughs> ad. So, uh, but uh, do you think there was a connection there? There could have been, I think because so. you're right, the little tear was coming down his face. It, it, it was well done. A it horse. was a short commercial, it was right at the beginning, so that way people were still paying attention, they weren't too drunk. There so. were <laughs> See, there were some that uh, there were some that that I laughed at. I, I said I saw this tieclass.com. I said, ah, oh, this is good. This uh -huh. is good. There were some I'm saying, what's going on? And do we do one more and we'll take a break? Is that all right? We're gonna do this next because I saw this next one. I said, okay, what are you talking about? Roll, roll the next one here. When you're running with these animals, the one thing you can never do is show fear. respect for the squirrels, you will have problems during the running. You have to be faster and quicker than the squirrels. You have to have very good reflex. You get confused because of the of the size, I think. They are small, I can manage them. No, that's not true, you can't. He perdido muchos amigos corriendo detrás de las ardillas. To beat the squirrel, you must think like a squirrel. As long as I have legs, I will run with the squirrels. EDS, managing the complexities of the digital economy. I like that one. That was one of my favorites. I, I thought it was it maybe a classic at some point. You get out of here. Remember the cat herders from last year? I, remember, I like the cat one. herders, yeah. It's the same people. All right, well, here, here's my point on this, Dr. Gusky. And at, at, the, <laughs> at the end of the commercial, I mean, I should understand what this company does. Right. I have no idea what they do. Fred, they don't care that you don't understand it because you're not one of their customers. These are, they're dealing mainly business to business. They're providing... Uh, computer services assistance to small and large businesses. You're not one of them, so it doesn't How does matter. that explain what they do? Well, it's suggesting that if, you know, you have to remember that the little guys are the ones that you have to go after, not the big competition. I, I thought it was very clever. I thought it had, last year it was just these cats being herded. Didn't make as much sense. I thought this one at least had some, some basis for it. I, I, I liked it. I think it's a good one. And, and it was on the uh, USA Today as one, one of the One thumb up, ones. one thumbs down on this one, I'll tell you, because <laughs> I don't. There. All right, we have more commercials to come. If you want to chime in, we have plenty of time on the show today. There's no problem. 333 PCNC Hansberger Live will be back. 
Well, okay, Dr. Audrey Gusky is with us. She is the, uh, she's a doctor of marketing trends, Duquesne University. She's an ad expert. She teaches kids that that EDS ad was a good ad, whereas uh, the guy in the business says it sucks. So I don't know. <laughs> I just don't think it's a good, it's a waste of money. Well, obviously a lot of people didn't think so. You're right, and you're the expert. I'm serious. You're the expert. You know, Robin, you're on Hans Burger Live. What do you think? Um, I, actually, I like that commercial with the monkey. Well, the and, monkey. Yeah. The, chim the chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. The chimpanzee. Yeah. Yes. Um, because immediately, I didn't understand the commercial, but immediately after I seen the monkey pick the thing up off the ground, the chimpanzee, excuse me, <laughs> and the tear came down. It immediately reminds me of that litter campaign. There you go. Oh, it did. For I'm her I'm only too. 34. Good. I was a little girl when that commercial was out. Now, if I cut on to that, I'm sure a whole bunch of other people had to catch on to that. All too. right, that's good. So thank you. you. Thank was you. that your favorite one, Robin? Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah, really? It was. <clears throat> My favorite one's still to come. Because I used to always think it was sad when the Indian and they were throwing all the litter down and it just... I thought that was the sad, too. The poor little chimpanzee yeah. was really sad. Well, that's one of the classic of all time ads, Robin, so you have a good memory and that was, that was a classic American ad. Litter always makes me cry. Uh, what was the number one all-time classic ad? Of all-time Super Bowl yeah, ads? Yeah. That was the Mean Joe Green commercial where, where he throws the jersey at the little boy and, and takes the, the coke. Yeah. All right. Classic. Let's, uh, we did the, oh, this is a good one. The next one's coming up, uh, another one of our Budweiser things. Oh, okay. They continue to try to find ways to do what's up. Well, you know what? They had four, all four of their ads were in the top ten. So they were extremely pleased, Budweiser, this year. Extremely right. pleased. Let's run this ad. This is Brett. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just watching the market recap, drinking an import. That is correct. That is correct. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, Brett, who's that? Hey, Chad, pick up the cordless. Chat here. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I did like that cover. You didn't like that. That was okay. It got annoying after a while. And yeah. I think they re-aired it again either at the end of the game or um, at the post They did. Game. They, I know they ran it in uh, Survivor. Oh, that was it. Or okay. maybe it was post game. You know that, because uh, I have this, uh, my British friend Ray Clark in, mm -hmm. in Great Britain, the What's Up commercial is the number one commercial in Great Britain. Is it really? Like, What's Up? Hard to believe the British have that much humor. They, they love it. They love us Americans. All right. Uh, now, another Pepsi commercial, which... Uh, yeah, let's roll the Pepsi commercial. Yeah, the Pepsi commercials didn't do much for me this year. No, that one didn't do anything for me either. It, you know, it was a lot of build up for pretty much nothing. You're waiting, you're waiting, waiting, and then it's just, you know, it was. Uh, How can, I mean, flat. is there, what are the legal ramifications of using your competitor? I mean, are you allowed to use the Coke thing? Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be any problem. They've, they've done it before. Remember the guy who was the delivery guy yeah, for yeah, Coke? Yeah, and he yeah. pulled the, the can out. And, and Burger King and McDonald's used to do that. Burger King and McDonald's. I mean, that, mm -hmm. I, you really have to, you're really you're crossing the line because that usually you don't mention, like even on radio stations, we never mention the other radio station. We never, it's just, it's just so you really have to be. Well, you look at pain relievers and, and you know, uh, Tylenol will say Daytro, you know, Tylenol is, 50% faster than Daytroll, so yeah, they can do it as long as they can prove what they say by simply showing it on the, the TV like they did. Nah, that, that wasn't an issue. It's it, illegal in some countries, but in this country it's not. Some so. countries, thank goodness we have this. <laughs> and this next ad I didn't get either. This next ad, they, they some of these ads like this. It's a MasterCard ad. Oh, I oh, I, you didn't like this one? No. Nah. Oh, I love the MasterCard price list. This one I think was a good one. Let's roll it. The first item for bidding is the letter B. It has been used by various notables, among them Shakespeare and Cookie Monster. <laughs> Lot number 12, the color red. It causes automobiles to stop and bulls to charge. Lot 32, gravity. Paperweight of the cosmos. Sir Isaac Newton's springboard to fame. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. 
Yeah. I like that one. First of all, I like the MasterCard ones all along. I do too. Yeah, and I was looking forward to this one. I thought it was, you know, it was a little bit slow moving at, at the beginning. It was different. I paid attention, I think most okay. people. Okay, well, you know, that's the important thing if you pay attention. And you remember that it was MasterCard. That's the key. That's right. To make that's the connection. Right. Yeah. All right, this next one got my attention because I sat there and I said, Let's roll it. Another Pepsi ad, and I like this one. Yeah, this was a good one. Hi, I'm Bob Dole, and I've always spoken to you frankly, no matter what the subject. That's why I'm eager to tell you about a product that put real joy back in my life. It helps me feel youthful, vigorous, and most importantly, vital again. What is this amazing product? My faithful little blue friend. Cold Pepsi Cola. Are the revitalizing effects of Pepsi Cola right for you? Check with your local convenience store counter clerk and start living again. I feel like a kid again. The joy of Pepsi. See, I, when I first saw that, I said, I can't believe he's really pumping this Viagra thing because he used to be the spokesman oh, for Viagra. Oh, sure. That's the way he was leading up to. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. But I, I thought that took a lot of guts for him to do that. I thought it was great. Well designed. Well done. And, and he has such a dry humor, especially at the yeah. end with his line. Who says Republicans Perfect. don't have a sense of humor? We like that one. You said they offered Clinton? They offered Clinton a, a commercial for the Super Bowl. They offered to pay him $2 million, and he turned it down. What was it so, for? I, I don't remember. Dry cleaning? I don't know. I, I can only imagine. What am I? <laughs> well, he could have used that. Or cigars. But cigars, that's that. right. It could have been a cigar commercial. We have to hit a couple commercials, but we'll come back with more. And, oh, look, we have calls. Hans Berger Live. We'll be back. Talking to Dr. Audrey Gusky, marketing expert at Duquesne University, and uh, we're talking about the Super Bowl ads from yesterday, which were much more interesting than the Super Bowl itself. Thank goodness for those ads. Cindy, you're on Hansberger Live. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Cindy. Hello. You're on the air. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you about the Volkswagen commercial. Mm -hmm. Which one? The one with the tree. Okay. I wanted to ask about the one about the tree when he throws the ball up in the tree. Yeah. And the ball comes down. Yeah. And uh, he throws his shoe up in the tree and the car comes down out of the tree. Right. And um, I don't know what he says, but I know he says, next time we'll slow down the clutch. Yeah, clutching. Let yeah. the clutch out a little slower. Did that make yeah. sense to you, Cindy? He, huh? Did that commercial make sense to you? Yeah, that was cute. I didn't like it. Well, you were one of the few ones that liked it because most people did not prefer that one. Yeah, according I mean, to all the I, I'm saying, okay, this has got to be a very good commercial because right now I'm bored to death. And, and then they uh, had it on twice. Yeah, so I didn't like it. And then the car falls out of the tree. I'm saying... Well, you have to keep in mind, this is Volks Volkswagen's first time on air for the Super Bowl ads, yeah. and they were the only car commercial. They were exclusive, so they spent a lot of money, and they bombed. The so. first one was a 60-second commercial where it took forever to get the car down. The second one, they gave us a little break. and Thank yeah, God, yeah. Then it featured, yeah, the first one had mm -hmm. a third guy looking like, what are you guys doing? All right, the next ad, you didn't like this ad either. Oh, this the one I thought one. was the worst. So, so distasteful. I, distasteful, I was offended really? by this You were offended by oh, this yeah. ad. Well, let's see it. We've got a male. He's fallen off the white pony. He's a donor. What, what offended you about that? I, I just thought it was like, what? What does this mean? You know, here they, I, it, I kept thinking of people who are actually donating organs, and then they're making fun of that, and then this, this scrawny looking guy, they give him these jeans, and he's so pathetic looking, and I would never buy those jeans. Obviously, I wasn't the target. Reissue jeans, and uh, I'm wondering if they're like from the Salvation Army. They're reissued jeans. I mean, are they really reissued jeans, or are they just, they, they got to be retro jeans. They can't be used jeans. No, they're just that look. You know, the look of that they're reissued. coming back, yeah. In fact, I saw, I was watching the Today Show last week when I was off. I had plenty of time to watch. And one of the hottest jeans out are jeans that look dirty. 
Oh, yeah. Remember, they used to have the jeans with the holes in them. So yeah, that's right. We've been there and back. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, but so we're back there again. Yeah. So you were offended by that. I thought I, cute. Did you like? Oh. You fell off the pony. You get the little pony. And, that and was it in. fell like halfway in the meter as far as, oh, as really? most people. It was like, uh, yeah. Those are sensitive that people. Was, that, I thought that was the worst one. Snickers had a, a bunch of commercials and they were okay. Let's see one of them. Don't go there. Don't go there. One dollar. Get a life. Get a life. Love you, but I'm not in love with you. You have not if you're the last man on earth. Oh, yeah. Don't you are the last man on earth. Don't you are the last man on earth. Off to the hand. I think your sister's pretty. I think your sister's pretty. I think your sister's pretty. What's up? What's up? Because I'm your mother, that's why. Need to crunch something? Thank you. Grab a new Snickers Cruncher. Crispy rice, peanuts, and chocolate. Crunchy. Do you have a... Uh, don't worry, it happens to lots of guys. Yeah. Hungry? Crunch this. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. They're trying to introduce a new candy bar that got people's attention. So that, it was, it was. I was half watching. Decent. I forget what I was doing. We, uh, my son had like ten people over, so I'm watching. Uh, I was half watching. I'm saying, what, what is this about? Yeah. What did the kids think of it? Uh, they were doing something else. They didn't care. Right. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. They were down in the game room, and I'm up uh, trying to keep myself separate. And after some of these commercials, I heard them really roar. Oh, you can hear them okay. roar after some of them. They yeah. didn't roar after this one. Well, you know, the uh, halftime show was definitely geared toward the young group. Uh, the, uh, the PlayStation insane. 2 went on during the halftime show. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. The halftime show was not seen by at least the young people at the party at my house. My daughter was glued to the, the set. Teenagers. She wanted to see Britney. Is that right? And, yeah, and the InSync group, yeah. Wow. Okay, uh, what's this guy's name? John, you're on Hans Berger Live. Yes, uh, I, I was going to say about the, the best commercial that I, I like the best was the uh, the dog that was lifted up and going into space. Oh, another oh, Budweiser that commercial. Was a good you one. like that one? I like that one, John. Yeah. That was that one rank up there near my best. Yeah. We have. You want to see that one? Yeah, we have that yeah, one. Yeah, I like we, to see that. One. We have that one. Turn on your. Well, you're watching your TV. Turn it up. Here it is, right here. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh man, we are not alone. <laughs> yeah, that was, that would be that my favorite. That was a good one. <laughs> that, I, I think that was my second favorite one. See, some guys from Philadelphia made that. They originated that. What's up? What's yeah. up? And uh, they, they, and I, you get to one of those places where you say, okay, where's the beef? Enough. Uh huh. But they've really taken this. You know, where they had the wasabi, wasabi. Oh, that was a good one. Too. And then learn, learn how to say <laughs> what's up in ten different languages. Kanichiwa. Stuff like that, right? They've taken it on a different level. This this was good. It had a lot of like science fiction types of things. You were watching it very closely because you wanted to see what was this commercial about. That that I'm surprised that didn't make number one on the list. For I don't even sake. drink for crying out loud, and uh, it, I, I love these bud commercials. So that that's was, good. That All was right. A very good. One. Well, we're making a show out of this. This is great. All right, take it. We're gonna take a. <laughs> <laughs> Can we dig up any more? Let's dig up some infomercials. You can just fill out the hour. We have some more commercials coming up with Dr. Audrey Gusky. Stick with us, Hans Berger Live. All right, we're back with Dr. Audrey Gusky, marketing expert, uh, Duquesne University. We're talking about the Super Bowl ads from yesterday: the good, the bad, the ugly, and the ununderstandable. Miss, I just I don't understand some of them. I guess the next ad we're going to see uh, is a singular ad. Singular, I mm -hmm. guess, is a brand new phone company, cellular phone company, right? Wireless phone company, I guess, is the request. And they had three or four ads. They have all kinds of ads. Yeah. I don't understand any of them. One of them had the Peter and the Wolf uh, theme to it, where the guy was just dancing, not even to the Peter and the Wolf of uh, 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 Prokofiev. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it. And then uh, this one you said reminded you of the Christopher Reeve ad. Right, because it was sort of a sentimental one, yeah, tugging at your heart. heart uh, handicapped tugging. artist. Excellent. I thought that was well done. I thought it was tastefully done, and it got your attention. Yeah. All right, let's see. Well, <laughs> 
first started I said oh no we're not making fun of somebody here I said ah, I was getting a little uncomfortable right and then I, I thought that was so moving I, I got chills when I saw that that was that was just so wonderfully done and, and it it just allowed you to see handicapped people in a new light I think singular could have stopped with that ad put all their eggs in one basket aired it and, and instead of buying the two or three ads that they did it was excellent yeah okay see I, I this is another one of the singular and, and this happens a lot with the dot-com ads mm -hmm. uh, it's a wireless phone company, and, and aside from this, I mean, that uh, they obviously were making a statement on that ad, but the other ads they make, what are we telling me about your, why is your phone company different than the other phone companies? Uh, why am I going to your wireless phone other than uh, Nextel or, or Verizon or AT&T? Mm -hmm. And do we really need another wireless phone company? And if we do, why do we need yours? Yeah. Uh, I, I would think that those would be the things that a new wireless phone company would have to project, as, as opposed to a guy dancing around a Peter and the Wolf uh, and and some of the other similar that uh, people dancing and then coming out to the singular yeah. logo. Well, you remember that was the problem with all the dot coms last year. What they ended up having is these commercials that you couldn't figure out what that company stood for, or what they did, and it was similar to the singular. You, if you didn't really know who they were, you wouldn't have known from a lot of these. Commercials. I mean, if it's singular, if if it's aimed toward business. Um, why should business go to you? I mean, mm -hmm. Right now, it seems that pricing is the, the key factor in determining what uh, wireless phone you get, what kind of pricing plan you get, and neat mm -hmm. little phone you get for nothing. As well as service they provide yeah, and that's Your coverage yeah, and sure. all of that's a web, web hosting service. Exactly. Can you get the web from, from all this? These guys are telling you none of that, absolutely none of that. But, you know, keep in mind, Fred, what's, what's the venue here? It's the Super Bowl. People are seeing all these fun was up ads, and so you know, to have something that's so techy would have turned people completely off. So they were trying to get... And maybe, you know, maybe, I'm not sure, I haven't even seen an outlet where you can get a singular phone yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not out yet. Maybe this is a pre-just-get-to-know-your-name thing. It could which be. Which be a different thing. Yeah, huh? it could be. And then maybe they're going to have another series of, of ads. I have a feeling they're going to have a big um, print ad campaign and a lot of Wall Street Journal and business All publications right. to get the word out. All right, dot coms, they were not gone, but you said there were three of them. There were three left and here. This is, uh, mm -hmm. this is one of the three. Let's roll it. With over 400,000 jobs, one will make you happy. <laughs> I didn't see that That was one. different, yeah. The one I saw for Monster.com was when the guy was sitting in his little cubicle and uh, had his new business cards delivered mm -hmm. to him. And then he took the business card out and then just, uh, you know, started having an experience with uh, kissing it and smelling it and who knows what. <laughs> and because he loved his job and then the Monster.com thing came out. Uh, I thought that was nice. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was... Um, it, was a, it was a this. It, it was, I it would say... It wasn't down. Yeah, it was wasn't, a this. It was, it was a this. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, good. We go from uh, one dead ad to another dead ad <laughs> involving dead people. Uh, let's go to the next ad. I'm Rick Stoddard. That's my wife, Marie. She died from smoking cigarettes. She was 46 years old. 46. Now I look back on our lives together and I just keep coming back to... She died at 46 years old. I guess I never thought of 23 as middle-aged. Yeah. See, now this... I had seen this ad before, so it wasn't a debut ad. Okay, well, I had not seen it. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. They had also run one earlier in the game that just had a settlement agreement on it. Yeah, so yeah. 
they were obviously very serious and trying to get people's attention. I wonder where they got all the money to buy those ads. You know where they got all the money to buy those ads from? Mm -hmm. The tobacco settlement that the tobacco companies have uh, the millions and millions and millions of dollars that the tobacco companies have agreed mm -hmm. to pay uh, on the uh, nonsense lawsuits because people will ignore ads like this. It doesn't matter what happens. They're going to ignore them. They're going to smoke. And then they'll blame the cigarette company. Well, that's a whole other mm -hmm. show. So, little Tony, you're on Hans Berger Live. You know what, Brett? You know what I noticed in these ads that people seem to overlook? The music. Ah. When you showed the ad um, with the handicapped painter, yes. it was almost like a um, Catholic choir singing, and I, you know, and I got pictures of Rembrandt and Van Gogh, and then they showed this other ad with the, with the guy in the casket. Yeah. I got a feeling this was going to be a, an ad for a mob hit because he was dressed in dark black suit and they were playing something to me sounding like Caruso or a mob hit. Now I wonder how many people go what goes into the music study on this. That's a good point and remember the Mamas and Papas song for one of the dot-com companies with the little marble escaping go where you want to go. Oh yeah go where yeah yeah yeah. So, so Tony brings up an excellent point the fact that music was a big part very big part. Well, and the, again, he said what study goes into a lot of study, a oh. lot of research. Some of these companies are starting now to put next year's Super Bowl ads together. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, it's, this is one of Pittsburgh's favorite airlines because we don't have them. Southwest Airlines. I got to say, uh, if this is the one I saw, I'm not sure. Well, let's roll it. I'll see if it's uh, the one I saw or not. That made no sense to me. I, 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 I just saw no real connection with an airline and pigeons in a car. And you know, that's low. It's low what he did, scaring the old man. And then what the old man did was lower. And okay. Yeah. And they usually and those ads are usually pretty good because they have those short ads where I forget them, but I like them. They're mm -hmm. very nice. They and many of them are not connected. Uh, like need to get away. Those you need to want to get away. Yeah. You know, the embarrassing ads. Want to get away. Southwest Airlines. Those are good ones. Yeah. This I one, I, I, I was surprised they wasted that much money on it. Maybe even of this. Let's say oh, that one it's probably. That, I, I, I didn't say. like that one. All right, the number one ad is coming up, so don't go away. It's amazing that we've been able to milk an entire show out of this. This is unbelievable. The magic we've done today, I just feel so good. Well, the number one Super Bowl ad is chosen by the USA Today Focus Group is coming up next on Hans Berger Live. All right, and now this whole Super Bowl ad thing started when? Well, it really kicked off in about 1980 when they had the commercial called 1984 where Apple introduced the Macintosh and they had this really science fiction type of commercial. A, a woman was running through a crowd of, of like zombies just standing there watching a screen. She threw this big hammer at everybody and or at the screen and everybody just went running and that was that was I think that was when advertisers stepped back and said hey wait a minute we've got this venue where we've got one out of every two Americans watching it let's take advantage of it and they have and so that was really when it kicked off when this first started, ad companies were only paying about $100,000 yeah. for 30-second ads. Well, now we're up to $2.3 million and climbing. Well, we need to. That's how I get paid. All right, so really, <laughs> you can't go high enough. Here's the, no the number one commercial. And then what, they put 100 people together, as we said, from USA Today, right? A focus group? Yes, a couple focus groups, and they had people watching. And well, this, this was, was the first commercial that was on. This was the first commercial after, I guess, the kickoff a little bit of time in the game, and so I have a feeling that's probably why this one was Because so this was a mind, I mean, this was we good. We were paying attention at that time. This is good, but all right, let's roll it. Here we go. Why don't you get us something to cool this fire down? I got just the thing. I got two laws for that fire. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That's, that's not that bad. 
<laughs> Cedric the Entertainer in the uh, Bud Light ad. Yeah. Uh, it was funny, but... It was funny. It was humorous. It was... But you see, I was thinking when he was doing this, maybe it's because I'm a dad. I was thinking, don't open that. Don't. And I'm saying, well, of course, it's TV and nothing will happen. Yeah. And then, of course, it did. Well, people have tried to psychoanalyze this commercial and say it's sort of the two brain... Two male brains left and right you know he's very calm and cool and seductive and then he just goes crazy when he's in the kitchen that's like the real him and then Audrey thank you for coming that's in a pleasure Fred making the show a show today <laughs> what are we gonna do tomorrow the commercial we're gonna analyze the commercials that run during this show we'll be back don't go away